31, we're going to graph yet another polynomial. All right, we'll talk about zeros, y-intercepts, and behavior. And I'm going to introduce this topic or this idea called the sign pattern. I mentioned it once briefly back when we were looking at quadratics, but I really want to start to hone in on it because it's, again, it's something you'll see in calculus. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. I've got my polynomial, it's already been factored for me. I see an x cubed and an x squared. So this is basically an x to the fifth polynomial. If I wanna think about n behavior, I already know I'm gonna have this set of arrows, left end down, right end up, because that's gonna be my lead term. And I know that the n behavior for the power on, or for a power function of x to the fifth has these arrows for it. Or if you wanted to write it up with sort of calculus notation, you would say as x heads left, f of x heads down. Or you could say, well, I should say, and you could say as x heads right, f of x heads up. All right, so let me go ahead. I'm going to just label my axes right now. Let's go ahead and find some zeros and some y-intercepts. So zeros are nice when your function comes in factored form. I can see that the zero from x plus two has got to be negative two zero, and the zero from x minus one is one zero. And if you're not sure where I'm getting that, again, ultimately, I would need to set x plus two cubed times x minus one squared to zero, and then I could apply the zero product property, which says if, oops, can we see that? Let me move this down just a bit so that we can see it. I'll move it back up in a moment, but any two quantities that multiply to zero, either x plus two equals zero, or x minus one equals zero, which gets me to x equaling negative two or one, but because they're ordered pairs, I need to write them up as ordered pairs. All right, for the y-intercept, let's see what would happen. If I let x be zero, this would be two cubed, and this would be negative one squared, so two cubed is eight times positive one leaves me at eight. So I'm looking at zero, eight. Okay, so those are all great things to keep in mind. The other thing I wanna take note of is I have an odd multiplicity here and an even multiplicity here. So I know I'm gonna cross the x-axis at this x-intercept, but I'm gonna to touch the x-axis here. So with all of that, I can make a pretty solid graph. All right, so let me just scooch this up. Actually, we have plenty of room, I can leave it here. So let's go ahead and label and scale our axes. I've got a 10 and a 10. So we've got negative two, zero and one, zero, and then zero, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so as I'm thinking about this, I know I wanna cross here and I wanna to touch here, but my end behavior, I'm down here and up here. So I must cross through, head up, come down and touch, something like that. That's ish what my graph looks like. So I'm gonna just sketch that in. Ooh, that is a sharp turn. I'm not sure I actually did that the best I could. It's gonna come through, something to that effect, okay? So let's talk about what a sign pattern is, all right? Because that's the graph of my function and I'll check it on my um, calculator in just a moment. But that's a decent sketch, all right? Again, cross the x-axis, touch the x-axis. I've got my two x-intercepts, I've got my one y-intercept, I see my end behavior, that's great. All right, now a sign pattern. Imagine you wanted to take this set of two axes and just kind of condense it into one number line. All right, so here's what a sign pattern looks like. You make a number line, okay? And how this works is you put the x values on the bottom and the y values on top. And I know that seems a little bit odd, but just go with me for a moment. So x values on the bottom, y values on top. And since we're in function mode, we're really gonna write this as f of x. All right, so I'm gonna make sure we're clear on this. Numbers go below here, and we're gonna call this a sign pattern. So you'll either have positive signs, negative signs, or zero signs. All right, so let's talk about this. 
the numbers you choose to put on the bottom here line up exactly with your zeros. So I'm going to put a negative 2 here and a 1 here. All right. Now, when x is negative 2, if you're below this little tick mark, when x is negative 2, what is f of x equal to? Well, we know it's equal to 0. That's how we found that number. All right, when x is equal to 1, when you're on the bottom side of this number line, what is f of x equal to? Well, it's equal to 0. So this is your sign pattern way of saying you have an x-intercept. When x is equal to negative 2, your y value should be 0. When x is equal to positive 1, your y value should be 0. And graphically, we see those as x-intercepts on our graph. All right. So here's a sign pattern way of looking at x-intercepts. Here's the graphical way. All right. So now I'm going to actually write in my sign pattern. And then I want us to see if we can figure out how on earth I got it. So we're going to go plus, plus, minus. And, or I should say minus plus plus as I move left to right. So how on earth did I get that? I want you to take a look at these signs. Negative, positive, positive. All right, negative between x being negative infinity and negative two. There's a positive sign between x being negative two and one. And then there's a positive sign from one to infinity. Because keep in mind on the axes, right, this is negative infinity and infinity on the left and right side. So from x being negative infinity to negative two, I had a negative sign. At negative two, I hit zero. From negative two to one, I had a positive sign. At one, I hit zero. And then one to infinity, I had a positive sign. All right, so let's try and think about what this means. What does it mean for y values to either be negative positive or zero. All right, when a y value is negative, where are y values negative on this coordinate system? And I hope you'll give me that y values are negative in quadrants three and four. All right. Where are y values positive on this coordinate system? And if you have positive y values, you must be in quadrants one and two, right? Because you have to move up. Negative y values, you move down below the origin, Positive y values, you move up above the origin. Or another way of saying this is when you have a negative symbol, your graph is below the x-axis, right? meaning it's in quadrants three or four. And when you have a positive y value, your graph is above the x-axis. Right? And I think you'll give me that my function went from below the x-axis, so we see the negative sign, then it hit the x-axis, so my y value is zero. Then it went above the x-axis, so my y values were positive. And then it hit the x-axis again here at one, and then it stayed above the x-axis. So we went below, above, above. And there were basically three pieces of my function split out between the zeros, right? We had the, the part of my function that was below x equaling negative two, between negative two and one, and x being one or higher. So that's a sign pattern. We kind of collapse this function or this graph into just the number line. And instead of showing the actual y values we do on the coordinate system, we just classify them or qualify them as either below the x-axis, on the x-axis, or above the x-axis. All right, and I'm gonna show you later on how you get more intricate with these sign patterns. And you will see them pop up all over the place in calc. All right, so with that, we're going we're gonna to move on to example seven, and we're going to take a look at the intermediate value theorem. I'll see you in a few. Bye.